Greetings and salutations, viewers. I'm Starfruits to say Chelsea, and welcome to Autumn's Journey. This is a little visual novel I saw online. I like the art style of it, and it's kind of a nice little thing, considering the first day of fall will happen not too long ago. It looked kind of cute, kind of interesting. It's supposed to be like, I think, an hour-long playthrough, so we'll see what happens. I like the fact that my uh, little thing here is an acorn, so let's see what happens. I already like the art style. Chapter 1, The End of Summer. Yeah, it's true, a lot of people are probably already back in school. Hope everyone's doing well with classes and such. Sunlight filtered through the airy birch forest as the lush ferns grazed my boots. I momentarily shielded my eyes before I turned north, treading carefully. The muggy atmosphere that hung over the past few months was now being replaced by the subtle crispness of fall. I love fall. It's such a nice and beautiful season. Through the trees were though the trees were still vibrantly green, apple picking season was fast approaching for the town of Barry. Kind of weird considering apples aren't really berries, although they're fruits. I cheerfully stretched one arm toward the sky, inhaling deeply. Ah, uh, and thus my weekly scouting for monsters, bandits, or anything out of the ordinary that may harm local citizens is over. She kinda looks like an anime version of Lightning from Final Fantasy XIII. Her hair is just not as pink. But what do I know? <laughs> or Lee. Oh, there's some voice acting, and that concludes my mission. I laughed, wondering why I announced my agenda to no one. <laughs> I guess I always just wanted to say that out loud. Good for you, Orly. Walking around alone does prompt you into monologuing just so you can hear a voice. Well, yes, that's what adventurers do, right? That's what heroes are for. Although usually villains are the ones monologuing, if you think about it. I just wish I wasn't restricted to freelance work in Barry, though. How long is my training going to last? I'm more than ready for knighthood. I can do this. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be one of those cases where it's like, if you think you're ready, you're not ready. I adjusted my sword belt, making sure the hilt could be pulled out at a moment's notice. You never know. There might be a rat that needs killing. Humming, I decided to meander back to the village by following the thin river down the giant, well, gentle slope. It might be a giant slope, too. You never know. Big G words and everything. I love the terrain here. There was always an inclination, and higher up, I could get a breathtaking panorama of Barry and its endless orchards. Especially in autumn, when the leaves were so vibrantly red that the entire forest seemed to ignite, and the smell of frost and fallen foliage lingered welcomingly. This person knows how to use words. Somebody knows how to do a good description. It was then that I spotted something entirely out of the ordinary near the riverbank leaning against a tree. Birch trees were not exactly comfortable resting spots, and I did not recognize the stranger's attire. Hello, are you a traveler? His face came into view, and I realized he was sleeping, but that's not what caught me off guard. He had beautiful protrusions resembling shale shards jutting out of his long hair, right where someone's ear should be. Or was it a decoration covering his ears? So he's got rocks for ears. Okay, I guess barely having rocks for brains, but okay. I suddenly wanted to touch them, but I resisted. If he woke up in an un untimely manner, it would be awkward to explain. Hey, it'd be like the uh, the first episode of Inuyasha when Kagome's like, Are those dog ears? I gotta touch them, even though he's sleeping. Well, I got that off my chest. <laughs> At first I was about to leave, but then I noticed something else rather odd. I saw no bags, no possessions, or anything else on him. This place was too far away from civilization for a simple afternoon stroll. Was he mugged? And if he had been in Barry previously, I would have known. It was that small of a town. Oh, do they like to pick a little talk, a little cheap, cheap, cheap about anybody new showing up? Curiosity won me over. There's something caught in my throat. Bleh. Um, hello? I grabbed his shoulder and gave it a gentle shake, finding his lack of response unnerving. He's in a stone-cold sleep. Best not to disturb him. 
I hovered a hand in front of his nose. Sure enough, he was breathing, and I did not see any injuries that suggested he was knocked unconscious. Hey, he's, I, I guess he's dead weight at the moment. I don't know. After more feeble attempts to wake him, I decided to improvise a camp. I did not want to leave him unattended, and I knew I couldn't drag his body very far. Well, if you couldn't do that, maybe you're not ready for the night hood thing. I don't know. Hard to say. Tossing down with my bag, I went to work. Okay. And the cat's scratching up my chair again. Patches! Patches! Stop it. And the dog wants to play fetch with a beat-up teddy bear, so... Whee! <laughs> the fire crackled merrily as I opened my cloth, which contained a lump of rye bread and hard cheese. Sounds absolutely delicious. These were emergency rations, lest I was unable to return to Barry. Mother and father were probably worried, and we don't have cell phones in this game. Just as I was about to bite into the cheese, I saw movement and glanced up, eyeing the stranger. Hello! I am purple now. At least that's what the coloring is. Kind of cool that they changed the lighting on the characters depending on the time of day. That's a nice touch, too. Setting my food down, I cautiously shuffled over. I had previously placed his body in a supine position and used my bag as a substitute pillow. Though it was probably more lumpy than anything else, it was better than nothing. Eh. Well, it'd be kind of weird if you were, you know, laying on him for a pillow. You don't even know the guy. And who knows? He might have rock-solid abs. Are you awake now? You've been out all afternoon. I was getting worried. Again, I like the fact that, you know, they changed the lighting on everybody. Whoa. In a split second, he shot up and then clumsily fell back. I caught his arm to steady him. Whoa, take it easy. You just got up. He flinched from my contact and I hastily let go, retreating slightly. I didn't get any sense of hostility, but he certainly seemed bewildered. Uh, who are you? There was an uneasy edge in his voice, not quite out of panic, but more of anger. It was then that I noticed that his eyes were a brilliant amethyst hue, contracting with his earthy hair tones. He's a crystal gem! Oh wait, they're all females, never mind. Arlie, I found you in the woods outside of Barry. The surprise did not leave his eyes. He stared at his hands and then covered his face, lastly he ran his fingers through his brown hair. The dogs have great timing. The animals all have great timing. Even right now, the cat's over there. He, I guess, it's crawling. My chair wasn't a, wasn't uh, suitable enough for him. Now he's just watching the dogs play. And chew on bones. <laughs> His horrified reaction was so unsettling that I dumbly sat there for several seconds before mustering the courage to address him again. Um, are you alright? Obviously not, but I wanted a better grasp of the situation. He attempted to sit up again, but this time I was prepared. Again, he was repelled by my touch, and I gave up trying to help him that way. Oh boy, he's, uh, he's a hardhead, isn't he? He still appeared unstable, but he stopped moving, at least. He actually did it. The hell? The what? He clutched at his temples, his fingers grazing over the odd shards in the place of his ears. He wobbled as he tried to stand, and I impatiently rushed to his side. Stop it, you obviously can't move in your condition, so you might as well sit down and clear your head. I'm sure it's all granite in there. What is going on? Who are you, and what are you doing here? He looked at me as if he was registering me for the first time since asking who I was. Everything about him screamed overwhelmed, and he simply grit his teeth in frustration. Well, let's see if he's hungry. I decided to find another angle to help him open up. I did not consider myself intimidating, but it was possible he had no desire to answer anything. Mm, I don't know. Are you hungry? I softened my voice and returned to my spot by the fire. I grabbed the cloth and genially offered him the rye bread and cheese. He only arched an eyebrow in disgust. Maybe he only eats rocks. Who knows? What is that? That is food. You chew it. 
I ripped off a piece of the dark bread and demonstrated, humming delightedly to show that it was edible. He scoffed and averted his eyes, and then he picks up a pile of dirt and just... Oh. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this guy's like a golem or something. I don't care. I don't want it. It looks revolting. Sorry my peasant food does not please my lord's taste. Oh man, she's got a bulging vein. You know this isn't gonna go well. Ugh, his attitude was rubbing off on me. Calm down. If anything, he's hiding that he's scared. He did just wake up in a foreign place. Are you nobility? I'm guessing that's a no. He fell silent, and only the occasional crackle of the fire and the hooting of owls interrupted the stillness. I leaned back and ruminated over my meal, careful to leave some food untouched in case he changed his mind. Again, this person really is good with vocabulary, whoever made this game. Just saying. Ruminate. You don't hear that very often. Uh, there was that apple tart, too. And maybe he's got a sweet tooth. Offer him some rock candy. I'll save it for later. I wrapped up the cloth, only vaguely aware that the stranger was examining my every movement. It nettled me slightly, but I didn't comment. I did not want to do anything that would raise his guard even more. It was now dark and I occasionally fed the fire, getting the feeling I was going to spend the night here. After what seemed like an eternity, he finally spoke up. Uh, um, who are you again? Arlie, I'm from the town of Barry. And you? Care. He reluctantly uttered the name, gazing into the fire. He seemed much calmer now. And how did you get here? His lip curled, smirking knowingly. He rolled down the hill like a boulder. <laughs> you probably wouldn't believe me if I told you. You have unusual eyes and a strange fashion accessory over your ears. I think I could find your story credible. He flexed his hand, scrutinizing his fingers. I didn't come here willingly. Of all the places, I don't see why he decided to drop me off in this lowborn, simplistic... Care? He glared at me, as if offended that I had addressed him directly. So, where are you from? I'm not particularly tied to any region. And if it's not obvious already, I'm not one of you. I'm one of the dragons. An earth dragon. Oh. Okay. He stayed at full pride with no ounce of humility. Dubiously, I inspected him from head to toe, taking note of the stone-like juts of for ears and his remarkable eyes. He blocked under my stare, but quickly regained his dignity. So why would an earth dragon be here? It's not because I wanted to! He blurted out angrily, then touched his unique ears for comfort. I sighed, then tilted my head as I absorbed his explanation. Alright, I'll admit I'm not exactly accepting this as feasible, but I'm not dismissing it either. You can't transform back? If I could, you'd think I would remain in this pathetic body? So weak. I instinctively patted my sword hilt to counter that remark, but stopped when I saw him attempt to stand again. Whoa. It was like watching a toddler take his or her first steps, but instead of coaxing, I was fervently discouraging his efforts. We've already established that you're unfamiliar with your form. Besides, it's too dark to walk around aimlessly. I'll find a walking stick for you and we can return to Barry if you'd like. It'd feel wrong if I abandoned you in this state. I don't need your help. Are you saying I can't handle myself? I'm pointing it out. Realizing we were both escalating our voices, I looked away in a huff, not wanting to have our encounter turn sour so rapidly. An altar. Uh... I need to find an altar. Your heaven kind worship us, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the dragon kind were here first, so it's only natural we pay our respects. I admit, I thought dragons were more divine and irreproachable. Care was definitely giving me a different impression. Well, he's an earth dragon. He's probably more set in stone with his ways, and he's a bit more rough around the edges. You kind of have to polish him a little to see the diamond, but... I barely knew anything about the dragon kind, though. They focus on their own affairs. You will take me there. It was a plain statement, not a suggestion, nor a plea. Why an altar? They're all heaven kind made. How would it help you? He parried my questioning exasperately. 
It doesn't matter. Do you know where one is? Yeah. Yes, there's one not far from here. There's a cave that leads to it. Good. We should go there this instant. He obstinately tried to stand up again, but I lunged forward and firmly sat him back down. He glared at me in disbelief, but my will was as stubborn as his. Morning. We will do this in the morning. Get some sleep and I'll find an ideal walking stick. I don't think you'll master a bipedalism without some assistance, especially not in a day. And it'll be difficult if I have to physically support you the whole way there. So just take it easy tonight. I'll even keep watch while you sleep. He fell silent and gave a reluctant nod, closing his eyes warily. I sighed gratefully, feeling moderately triumphant over that battle of pig-headedness. While Kara grumbled, I leaned over and pulled a small blanket out of my bag. The temperature was still pleasant, even at night, but it could cool rapidly, especially since it was the end of summer. Okay. After returning some items to my bag, I reshaped it so it was a passable pillow again and offered it to Kara, who seemed puzzled by its purpose. Believe me, you'll need something comfortable or you'll have trouble sleeping. Or I should wake up with a sore back and getting to the altar will be even more troublesome. <laughs> Here I slept on it once. I think you could figure out how to support your head with it again. I laughed sheepishly at my own stab at lightening the mood, but I could tell it wasn't working for care. Disgruntled, he lay down on his side and experimented with a few positions before resting his head in satisfaction. At first, he refused to use the blanket, but as the temperature dropped, he discreetly pulled it toward him when I thought I wouldn't notice. Mr. Big Tough Dragon ain't so big and tough after all. Surprising he keeps giving us the cold shoulder, but I guess even he is not cold-blooded and can adjust to temperature. Well, he is in a warm body now, so who knows. Probably to hide his expression, he rolled over so his back was to me in the campfire. I had a feeling the initial shock took a lot out of him, and I admittedly hadn't helped when he'd ruffled my feathers more than once. Now that he slept, any irritation I still felt dispersed along with the summer heat. I would need to be mentally and physically prepared for tomorrow, stay cool, and collect it as autumn. I poked the fire and stayed on my watch until exhaustion beguiled me into resting my eyes for just a few minutes. Oh yeah, this person is really good with their vocabulary. I'm impressed. Oh dear, are you poking him with a stick? Yes, you are. Uh, the animation's adorable too, actually. Hey. Hmm. <laughs> I guess he doesn't feel it. Oh, please. I've had less sleep than you and I'm already... <sighs> ...energized and ready to go. Pouting, I poked care some more with the walking stick I'd fashioned for him. It wasn't easy finding a sturdy stick in a birch forest, but I had located a long one that would suffice. I had spent the morning carving off any bark and even indented the top to make it easier to grip. Now, it was my dragon prod. Up, arise, sick of dragon! Whoa. Cut that out! Care hastily shot up, throwing off my blanket in a feeble attempt to hide the fact he used it. I decided to counter his usual scowl with the perkiest, most cheerful grin I could muster. Sorry about that. Good morning! My greeting was genuine. For some reason, it satisfied me to know that my high spirits irked him. Oh, you're one of those girls who likes to tease guys. Okay. I could use my sunny disposition to my advantage. It'd be better than snapping at him at any rate. Stop poking me with that. You're it's your walking stick. Here, you're welcome. I turned it sideways and offered it to him. He wearily gazed at it as if I was presenting a cobra instead, but carefully grasped it. Cautiously, he pressed the stick against the ground as he stood up. I remained close lest he topple over like yesterday. His fingers drummed against the carved handle and he looked at me quizzically. You spent time on this? Right. Well, I wanted to finish it off with a pretty flowing ribbon, but I had the feeling you wouldn't like it. Grumbling, Kara took a step forward, leaning on the stick before hesitantly taking another. With each step, he regained some confidence. Soon he was walking in a straight line, albeit with an uneven gait. He could not exactly break into a run or even a brisk stride, but it was a huge improvement from last night. I estimated we could reach the cave leading to the altar by mid-afternoon. I quickly packed and followed him since I had the feeling the only thing on his mind was that altar. It's this way. I pointed toward the gentle incline and Kara narrowed his eyes resentfully. Going downhill would probably be difficult for him. As we headed towards our destination, I kept my distance at first, but I gradually drew toward Kara, one hand extended in case of a stumble. 
care balked and increased the distance between us, determined to progress on his own. Yep, he is quite hard-headed, isn't he? However, his pace was excruciatingly slow, and he was unwilling to start any small talk. As the slope steepened, his footing became more unsteady, and I worryingly grabbed his arm for support. What? He twirled around in surprise, and I actually did end up bracing him. Once he was stable again, I sighed. Look, I know you don't like t me touching you, but if your priority is to get to that altar as soon as possible, I think you could swallow your dignity and accept my help. Besides, no one else is around to see you stumbling. You've done enough. I don't need any more help from you. Jeez. He shifted his weight and used the stick to ward me away. I frowned disapprovingly. Hey, if you try to hit me with that thing, I'll confiscate it. Uh, even I would do something like that. Gritting his teeth, he leaned heavily against one of the birch trees. When I get back, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Who? My master. His current answers stalled the rush of questions piling up in my head. It would be more of me to interrogate him when he was still obviously overwhelmed by the situation. Right now, the goal was more important. Right. Then let's get you to that cave. You believe me? Everything I told you? Eh, maybe you're just a very convincing actor, but I think even an actor would drop this charade after a while. Especially after falling asleep. Just as I was about to reach for him again, a low grumble pierced the forest. I glanced, I glanced at care in amusement bafflement, or amused bafflement. He averted his eyes, but I could tell he was embarrassed. Oops, someone's hungry. <laughs> you know, if you're hungry. I'm not. I think you'll be able to walk faster if you something to eat. What do dragons eat, anyway? Meddling heaven kind. I rolled my eyes. Well, you have a heaven kind stomach now, and I doubt it'll agree with a diet like that. But it does make sense that you wouldn't want to try the bread or cheese. I doubt dragons thresh rye or run dairy farms. Yeah, maybe. In some stories they might. Who knows? It was then that I remembered the apple tart. Even if Care found the pastry part detestable, the fruit would probably be familiar to him. I urged him to sit down. When he refused, I simply made myself comfortable on the ground first. Here, this is the closest thing I have to something found in nature. I could forage, but that would take even longer. What is that? It's a pastry. My dad owns a bakery. You probably wouldn't understand that. It's basically a treat with apple filling and I think some apricot jam. Thankfully, my dad preferred showing off the natural ingredients. As a result, the top of the tart had slices of appetizing fruit covered with a lustrous yellow gaze. I'm not big on apple tarts, but that sounds frickin' delicious. Kara sniffed it warily. It must have been agreeable enough since he accepted the pastry. Why are my clothes gone? You're welcome. As soon as he nibbled on it, he realized how famished he was and quickly devoured the entire tart. It's better than nothing. I watched as he coughed slightly and wiped the crumbs off his mouth, but his expression was unreadable. So, how was it? Anything tastes fine when you're starving. God. Or you just inhaled it so fast you didn't actually taste it. Well, it should tide you over until we reach the altar. Care grabbed his stick and we resumed our trip. The extra sugar boost seemed to lift both the pace and his mood, although he stayed taciturn. Such a charming fellow, isn't he? As we continued through the forest, I stopped and groaned when I spotted some dark trees. Oh, no. oh those are Yefelbin trees. Completely forgot we should probably go around them. Yefelbin? He peered at the thick, gnarled trunks. <laughs> what, scare the bark? It'll be quicker if we continue in a straight line. No, it's not about the trees, it's what lies in them. They make perfect nests for avatarals. The hell? The hell are those? Those giant bird things, I thought you would know them. I would if I understood your names. Why are you giving new names to everything anyway? We dragons were here first, we've already established. I raised my hand to silence him, not wanting to make any unnecessary noise. He scowled, but a shrill cry startled both of us. <laughs> then what do you call that? Whoa. Usually food. Well, that'll be us now. Ooh, perched on one of the lower branches was a reptilian bird with scales running down its front. The rest of the body was covered in earth-toned feathers. Can we see a picture of these things, please? Though probably no taller than four feet, its extremely wide wingspan and sharp talons made it a fearsome animal to encounter in the wild. Avatarals raised young way into the fall, so the mothers would be extra territorial this time of year. But 
The bird ruffled its plume, making itself seem larger than it was, and prepared to launch itself at us. I immediately stepped in front of Karen, grasping my sword as I took a defensive stance. With Karen's condition, an instant retreat wouldn't work. I'd have to guard him. What are you- you're not planning to fight it, are you? Do we have a ch- Look out! I shoved Care off balance. Thanks to my quick reflexes, we narrowly avoided a slash from the Avatarol's talons. The wind whipped up my hair as debris flew up around us. I scrambled to my feet and sprinted forward, hoping to keep the Avatarol's attention away from Care. As it dove towards me, I, it, I slashed upward. It veered away, dodging my counterattack. Care, I'll keep it busy while you get away. Are you stupid? I'm not leaving you behind. Care? I need you to take me to that altar. Of course, he's not concerned for our safety in the slightest. Why would he be? Maybe you should, if you shout the directions at me, I could get there alone. Yeah. I'm kind of busy here. I can't get my bearings in the middle of a battle. My aggravation was the incentive I needed to keep the Avatero at bay. However, my training had never crossed aerial attacks, and the bird's scaly front was like armor. Are you holding back? Uh, well, it's just protecting its young. It's trying to kill you. You think I haven't noticed? Oh, for the, the wings. Clip them. It won't hurt it, but it'll stop it from flying. Just clip the tips. I widened my stance as I prepared for another attack. At the last second, I leapt to the side, slicing at an angle. My sword beautifully sheared the Avatar's thick primary feathers. The monster swerved to the ground, its shoulder and head bearing the brunt of the crash. It let out a cry, and I felt a split second of guilt. That vanished with a yelp as the bird tried to tear me down with its talons. Luckily, the Avatar was designed for swooping down at prey rather than running on the ground, so it could only hobble awkwardly. As it screeched and futilely spread its wings, I retreated, grateful that it was even closer, even slower than care. I wolfed through the trees until it finally gave up chasing me. Sighing relief, I looped back and returned to care, who was also at a safe distance. Looks like it gave up. What about Xiong? It'll be fine. The feathers will grow back and it could still hop back to its nest. Its babies won't need to eat as costly as at this stage anyway. You sure know a lot about them. Thanks for the suggestion. He snorted indignantly. Such a charming dragon, isn't he? I already told you they're food. Of course I'd know about them. Soon the forest was quiet once again, with only the sounds of our footsteps and the tap of Care's walking stick breaking the silence. Surprisingly, he did not protest when I suggested safer routes, nor when I walked nearly shoulder to shoulder with him. Well, maybe we proved ourselves with that battle. Who knows? I had the feeling that staring, starting a conversation would push my luck, so I kept my mouth shut and instead hoped for no more setbacks. We kind of liked to have seen what that bird looked like, but pff, whatever. This is it. Yeah. yeah, it's not very deep, Cabe. You simply take a turn and the altar is right there. Okay. That's it? No complex mazes? No shiny sacred magic lake with a guardian or anything? Hey, we did what we could. This is a modest altar. I took a deep breath and smiled reminiscently. I haven't been here in years. I think I came before to make the occasional offering around harvest season. I gave Kara a cheerful look, but he continued forward, ignoring my recollections. I shrugged and followed, catching up to him. Kara awkwardly knelt down before the altar, discarding the walking stick once he was comfortable. His eyes closed with a softened scowl, almost as if he was meditating. Suddenly his mineral-like ears perked, and he started direct, uh, stared directly at the statue. There was no change in atmosphere, but I could tell Care was angry. His hand tightly gripped his knee. I know we're connected. I demand that you remove this stupid curse. He fell silent and I looked around in bemusement. He was talking to someone. But I could not hear the other half of the conversation. For some reason, that made me even more attentive as I tried to piece everything together. You can't be serious. So I said a few things, but... Huh? Yes, I've met one. That's how I found the altar in the first place. He whirled towards me and blinked in confusion as if studying me for the first time. I stiffened, wondering why he was staring at me so intensely. Once he finally turned away, I relaxed, although I could not help but feel anxious about the discussion. What about me? Weak, pathetic, gives strange names to animals, doesn't seem to know me about... know much about Ishtera or how the world works. Uh, is he referring to heavenkind in general or just me? What? Uh, I guess the food is half decent or something. What? No, 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 no. You're not sending me on a pointless inspirational quest. I'm not a child. I can't even walk in this form, so your plan is... At that moment, a blinding light flashed from where Care was standing, and I flinched in shock. Whoa, Care? 
By the time I had knelt down and worryingly grabbed his shoulder, the flash had already disappeared. In one smooth moment, Care removed my hand and stood up without the walking stick. His eyes still seemed focused beyond me, and he slowly nodded to himself. Um, did your powers return or something? He extended his palm and lurched towards the ground, slamming it against the hard stone. <laughs> Earthquake! The entire cave shook. The tremor visibly and mentally shook me as well, and my heart pounded loudly. I felt so paralyzed that I couldn't even scream. <laughs> Once I found my balance, I looked bewilderedly at Care, who flexed his unharmed fingers with a smug expression. So, he barely glanced in my direction. It's not exactly what I wanted. I a portion of my original powers and strength are back along with my balance. I can actually be comfortable in this form now. He gave a dismissive kick to the walking stick, then promptly walked away from the altar. Right. Well, that's promising. At least, what will you do next? Do what he ordered me to do and become normal again. I don't need your help. I can handle this on my own. Ah, so you don't need to follow me. I had to anyway. There was only one way out of that cave, but as soon as we were in the open air, Care took off running with a grace and speed I'm sure no real heaven kind could ever replicate. I blinked once, and sure enough, I was alone. I scratched the back of my head, still absorbing what just happened. You're welcome? Burying my head in my hands, I shook out my hair in frustration. Was I expecting something from this? Well, thank you, would have been nice. I tapped my sword out for reassurance. That's what night does. They help the weak and demonstrate their generosity when it is needed. Well, Kara's not weak anymore. He can definitely take care of himself now. I guess my duty is done. Right. Mission complete. Just some experience as a reward and a discarded walking stick. Deciding not to linger any longer, I started walking back towards Barry. My parents would certainly be worried by now. I would say so. You were out all night. Well, at least you had food with you. That's a plus. Wow, we're already into chapter two. That was quick. Well, as quick as you would expect, I guess. Hmm. Interesting. Actually, I think I might end up continuing this in this another episode, just because I kind of like this. I'm kind of curious to see where this is going to go. So, I guess we'll see what happens next time. I'm guessing we're not done with Care, because he was at the opening of the game. So, we'll see what happens next time with our two friends here. But for now, this is Star Princess HLC saying thank you very much for watching, and have a fond farewell.